This is Susie in Susie's Courtyard, and today I am with Diane Wilson, who's the owner and one of the owners and the winemaker for Wilson Wineries. And the reason this episode is called Running 10, I guess you can imagine, it's a double entendre. Uh, not only does Diane run 10 different properties, which is impressive, she also runs 10 miles a day. <laughs> I find the whole thing incredibly impressive. <laughs> so that's how I came up with the name Running 10. But um, we're excited to have Diane. And also with us is Jacques Bricks, who is a longtime friend of Diane's and is our color commentator today. <laughs> our color commenter today. Sidekick. Sidekick, exactly. Oh. Exactly. Our legal alien here? <laughs> yeah. Legal alien, yes. Legal alien. <laughs> so uh, we are enjoying some of Diane's Chardonnay. Diane did point out that she had some other varietals she could bring. And how many other wines do you actually make? <laughs> more than I can really count <laughs> on. I know. Um, we, at different wineries, so we have the 10 different wineries. So we specialize at the different wineries. So well, for, okay, for I'm going to. Diane is a very humble person, so I'm going to say what what she does is amazing. I mean, you're overseeing winemaking at 10 different properties, but what's really unique is that um, most wineries specialize in certain varietals, but um, in the Wilson Artisan Group, it's both Russian River, Dry Creek Valley, and Alexander Valley, so we've got the whole gamut of uh, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, uh, Cabernet, a uh, huge Zinfandel from the original winery, which is Wilson. And yeah, so uh, probably Zin is still over all the wineries. Zin is still probably the the biggest varietal that we do of anything because we we do have some out in Kenwood, you know, and then we've got three wineries in Dry Creek, and all the Dry Creek and Sonoma Valley specializes in Zinfandel. So I would say Zin overall is our specialty. Now, I, I did a little bit of research, and I happen to know that you and I have a lot in common. So, first of all, uh, Diane and I are both self-taught in winemaking, although I just have a degree in economics, and Diane, actually, you have a bio, bio yeah. chemistry degree, yes. so you're a little more qualified than I am. But yeah, you but still, really. But you learned, like I did, as a um, almost an apprenticeship environment where you're you're learning from doing and not from... Uh, being at UC Davis or in an educational program for wine. Yeah, exactly. It, it, the same as you. And it really gives, I feel, um, you didn't have a lot of preconceived notions. There was a lot of trial exactly. and error and learning and finding your style of what worked, usually by mistakes. Oh, you know, yes. the mistake that turns into, oh, into a new yeah. project. <laughs> well, this is really, we love this. This is nice. Did you, did you ever work for another winery? Nope. Wow. No, I worked, we had at Wilson, which was our first uh, mothership winery. We had, remember Duzumi and uh, Phyllis was with Duzumi and Mutt Lynch. And we had um, Stan Simpson. Is. And so they, and Domaine Danica, so we had all these little small winemakers in there. So I learned, uh, it was really helpful having them be there and be a reference point for me. Well, but you, you've always, I mean, I've known you for a very long time. And actually, I, I know all of your, all of the custom fresh people you're talking about, I actually know. And um, it seems like it's always been a collaborative effort. And... Um, you, you're always learning, even if you're learning from your clients, which is which is pretty yeah, neat. Yeah, you know, and it's still with winemaking, as, because grapes are an ever-changing, you know, they're not a constant there. You know, with beer, you know, for the most part, you get your ingredients. Oh, oh come on, beer makers, give me a break. If they don't like it, I, let me just say, they're if they don't like it, they, they, don't, a recipe. they don't have to wait a year for another crop. Uh, yes, yeah. Right. I mean, they can just pour it out and buy some more hops or whatever they can. Yeah, it's our one shot at it, <laughs> exactly. and you're making those decisions of picking. We like and them. We like, we beer, like beer makers. I'm just saying we have one chance. Yes. And even though we've been doing it for 20 years, 
You're, you're at 20 years, are yeah. you? Oh, oh, that's another thing we have in common. We're both 20-year um, uh, owner, you know, female owner, female proprietor, um, and we both started when we were about 14. So, <laughs> yeah, so we have that in common. <laughs> we have a lot in common. <laughs> so, yeah, I won't even anyway. say how old my kids are. Then <laughs> I still have, I still have toddlers. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But um, an another thing that I do that that you do as well is it's really fun to um, participate in winemaking when it's uh, cross region. I of course don't own vineyards and. I think you all have something crazy like 600 acres. So um, Diane has the added responsibility of, uh, of looking over vineyards as well. So I do not have that, and that I, I can't even imagine. But you're all, it's nice that you're doing such a cross section of varietals because it's a lot different. You know, winemaking is completely different. The process, um, the barrels, the blending, the aging for uh, Pinot versus Cabernet versus Infidel. I mean, they're all entirely different. So yeah, and then the whites, you throw the whites in, which oh, are yeah. just a whole nother, you know, and there's uh, so many different styles on the whites also that you do that it's, it, you know, it's every year I have to kind of get my head into what we're doing and, and focus on that when I'm bringing in Pinots and tasting Pinots out in the vineyard is very different than tasting Zinfandels. You know, they ripen so much differently and yeah, it's just a different... Yeah, so what would be the, the specific difference? Because I've never done um, so. For me, Zinfandel, so much of it is just pure flavor, you know, and then trying to balance of not having it go where you get it in and there's... 50% raisins in there. Well, and and I I distinctly remember, it seems like every time I run into mm -hmm. Diane during harvest, mm -hmm. and I mean, I'm serious, you're always off doing, you're about to do something important and harvest related. And I think I'm like on my way to the golf course <laughs> and you're on your way to do something important. But I, I think twice over the years, I've run into you like in the afternoon or something and you're going, oh yes, I have to go in tonight to uh, work on a stuck fermentation. Well, that's a really hands-on thing, but you know what people don't realize, the hardest part about making Zen is getting it to ferment because we pick it at higher bricks levels, but you know. You and it's always, and it is always a guess of what it's gonna sugar up to. But it's impressive to me that you are the person going in to do that on a night shift, to make sure it's healthy and yeah, doing you what know, it's we're, we're each one, each, Overall, with the 10 wineries, you can say it seems like we might be large, but each winery is quite small. I have, you know, mm -hmm. two cellar guys and me, and they're working long hours, is and they it, work harder than me physically, so... Is it two cellar guys per winery, and then you? Is at, that at Matrix, well, we make our... Yes, yeah, so I have four cellar guys who work under me. Chris has about four, I think, and Antoine has about So I think, so Diane's, did I, Diane, I guess um, in a more corporate environment, you would be considered the director of winemaking. Yes. Because you have you have winemakers that also report to you. Yes, so we have three other, well, my daughter who works with me directly under me, she's not on her own looking after wineries. But we also have Chris Barrett up at Pezzy King in St. Anne's. And I think is soon to be taken over to Coyote, which you know we're making some Coyote wines over there. Um, and then Antoine has Jackson Keys, Mazzocco, and Soto. Now um, I find it amazing that let's go back to the actual running thing. So um, you've always been a runner. I have been a runner since high school. I started running cross country in high school, and I took a trail running class with a friend of my dad's, a scuba friend of my dad's, down in Marin at College of Marin. Sorry about that. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Hey, you're well, the guest of honor. You're the guest. Do you need to get it? No. Okay, we're fine. No. <laughs> we want to know who it is. Is it Must Ken? Be Ken Cole. It's Ken. Yes. Ken would be. Oh, no, 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 what time is dinner? It's bad to the bone is Ken's. Um, oh, that was Margaret. So, 
Um, back to your running. So you, you run every day, it sounds like, or most I days. I run probably, depending on what I have, what race I have dangling there. A race always puts the fear factor of getting some more mileage in. But you must be incredibly busy between running and, you know, physically running and running all these properties. Yeah, running is time consuming, especially long distance. So um, I usually do my runs first thing in the morning. Winter time, every once in a while, I'll do an afternoon run and finish up. Um, I just signed up. It's actually a virtual run because almost every actual physical run has been canceled. So um, I signed up. It's running. It's it's what it's simulating is running from down in Southern California up to the start of Lake Sonoma. There's Sean O'Brien. Oh so it's gosh. 461 <laughs> miles. And you have wow. to, so you go in and record your miles and set, plug them in, but you do it on your own. You're not running with anyone. So I said that I, crazy, they, he did have the option that you could run 461 miles in one week, two weeks, four weeks, or two months, and I did the There's no four-year option for <laughs> No. <laughs> so it was, you can be a runner, you can be crazy, almost crazy, crazy, or certifiable to... But isn't it, isn't it great how everybody's coming up with creative ways to, to Yeah, uh, get so I thought pandemic. it was fun. You just plug in your, send your Garmin, with recording what you ran once a week or daily whenever you want, and they keep track of it. And I'm not hoping to win it. I'm just hoping to get the 461 miles. I, I'm a I'm not a marathon <laughs> I'm not a marathon runner. I'm a runner who did one marathon, and my lofty goal was to finish before they opened up traffic in New York to taxis. And I oh, made did you it. do the New York? New York yeah, City. I did New York, yeah. and I, I made it for the oh, taxi startup, but. But um, so you, it sounds like you have a very balanced life. You're not doing nothing but work, and you're not doing nothing but running. So you're combining all of your. So is your life balanced like your wines? Would you say? Yes. <laughs> you know, I have, I have, I've had employees that I've had for almost as long as we've had every winery, and they are just, you know, we work so well together. They're just partners. So. They've taken a lot of the day-to-day -day little details that I used to have to micromanage because I was worried that they weren't going to be done right. So I do have time. Like we bottled today, I was able to run at, um, sorry, trying to, de trying to decline that. Shock, my <laughs> ringer's on too. I don't, I'm not getting anything. <laughs> sorry, that's Sydney. That's Sydney. Oh my my daughter. Crazy. And um, also... Diane uh, is married to a wonderful man, man, Ken Wilson, who is really, I mean, the two of you have really had a huge impact on Sonoma County with um, your properties and the development of your varietals and all yeah, of your I wins would... at all the competitions. It's pretty exciting. Well, you know, he's really the, I would, he's the visionary behind. He's the one who, he's always looking to the future. I tend to be going behind him, trying to keep everything in order and make the wine and, but he, he is always, you know, at, at, at 75, he's still like thinking 20 years down the road and it's like, it's like, well, good for you, but. Well, it's like, it, from the outside, it could seem that, that uh, Ken is focused on just buying properties and that's not true at all. I mean, he, he puts a lot of thought into how it fits into the whole group and, yeah. and whether it's, whether it makes sense given the vineyard properties you already own. And, and I know this from talking to Ken. Yeah, I mean, he it, puts... It's, it's pretty, it's very thoughtful. It's not a jump in and buy kind of situation. And he is really long term and he keeps looking going, this is an investment. He's not doing things short term. And he loves his projects. I mean, he pours over topo maps, and and he gets, still gets out and is on the tractor a lot of days. He loves he loves being on the he tractor. loves doing vineyard development. Well, so he, that's his. He's a hard that's one worker. of his favorite. He he would be so bored if he didn't have. Well, he probably 
be an alcoholic if you didn't have work because, I mean, you start drinking. <laughs> <laughs> He's from Canada, but you're from, you're from here, right? Are you from? I'm from California. Northern California? Yeah, right? Marin. From Marin, yeah. Right. 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 So I'm not very far from home. Ken's, Ken's from Toronto. from Toronto. He was born and raised in Toronto. So, um, I so uh, during I'm, I, I is it okay for me to bring up the fires? Yep. So during the uh, fires of 2019, and everybody the the world knows that or the nation knows that it was a very tragic thing, and I went was in a Starbucks, and Ken was there because it was his office because he wanted to keep working and the sort of uh, image that the whole world saw over and over nationally was what we're seeing now which is soda rock winery burning and that must have been a horrific thing for you to watch i'm getting chills just talking uh, we about were it. down in san francisco and kind of I first woke up because I had the um, uh, that Nixel alert woke mm -hmm. me yes. up, oh, and yeah. mm -hmm. then people started texting, and then I Ken it was refusing to even get out the pet lane, and I just kept relaying things to him. And you know, an amazing photo that photographers mm -hmm. were yeah. there that were like was a reserve fireman who got most of it. So he caught these amazing. To me, they were. A, a spectacular but they, shots. They were over and over. It, it was it was breaking it it was breaking America's heart to watch that footage, and it, it really made people understand how serious and terrible these fires are. Yeah, it was. You know, and you just you 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 don't think it's ever going to happen to you. You know, I mean, it's as usual. It's. We thought, and I had at that point thought it was moving on toward Calistoga, and we were out of the woods, and, and we'd gone down to San Francisco because it was the only place that had power. You know, we were evacuated here. Yeah, and that, and that's what people. I, I don't think uh, people really understand what we go through as a community when suddenly there's a fire. You know, or we know it's fire season. Yeah, and the past fire. two years, and this year is starting out to be scary already and it's been so windy and when i understand that you're uh you're actually pouring again at soda rock correct we are out in the barn and it spared the it spared the barn <laughs> amazingly <laughs> this you know 100 year old just old single wall it just looks like it would you could lit a match to it and i did a, yeah, i have to give the fire fireman credit they it did catch a little part of it, and they were able to put it out, and that's the one structure they saved. So um, it's, it's still been a little bit of a nightmare with insurance and. Oh, I know. Well, I, I trying um, to to deal with and even just get all the the refuse cleaned up is. Well, I saw Ken, uh, you know, shortly after again. It was in Starbucks, and he's just. What are you going to do? You have to move on, and and um, it, it, it sounds like you can't let all of your wineries suffer. You know, the show must go on in winemaking. You have no choice. Like, you still have to make sure that production is taking place and that we're checking on wines, no matter what's happening. I mean, even during this pandemic, um, the great state of California doesn't want bad wine to be produced. I know, so, they made, we were essential workers. <laughs> Thank goodness, I know, I know. Keep, yeah. keep, keep the U.S. supplied in wine. Exactly, <laughs> and, and we love all of you essential drinkers. <laughs> right? Yes, thing. and I think people have done their job essentially drinking during this I know, this thank, thank you. Can we all say thank you, it's heartfelt. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, what is your favorite, by the way, this Chardonnay is great. I, Diane literally makes a lot of wines, and, and just so you know, Jacques, Diane said, well, how many wines should I bring, what should I bring? And I said, well, bring whatever you want, but Jacques and I really like Chardonnay. So, <laughs> so I, you know, so and that's I didn't why take it as, this. so sorry, I really <laughs> thought I could have brought, you know, a oh, bigger I know that, array but, of but wines. This is about you, 
even though it's it's really about us drinking and hearing about you. <laughs> Yes, he does. It brings and me I into it. I haven't I have not seen <laughs> no, yes. you but or we haven't s- since and all We had dinner usually once a week, but in three, four months, just like crazy. Well, and the thing we love to do are field trips. We have been on some very fun field trips where we just explore a different wine region. I mean, it's a little limited now, but we're we overdue. Do. When things get back to normal, we need another field trip. Next week. How about Paso Robles? Oh, I'm up for, I'm up for anything. Yeah, I'm taking a road trip this road time. Road trip to Paso, yes. <laughs> so this is, just so people know what we're enjoying, this is a Wilson, which is your flagship winery, and I think they showed your other wineries a little bit earlier. Um, this is a reserve from Sonoma County, which leads me to believe that um, because it's not a, an Appalachian, you probably took your your best vineyards from Alexander Valley and Russian River, perhaps? That's it, exactly. Oh, look. I took that was it exactly. That's what I'd do if I were you. <laughs> so, um, I put together because we don't have any Dry Creek, which Wilson Winery really specializes in Dry Creek wines. I have a Dry Creek. Yeah, most of our, our vineyards are from Dry Creek. We do a few out of it. So, but we don't have any Dry Creek Chardonnay planted. So, well, for good reason. So this is blended. <laughs> it's technically <laughs> a state, but we can't call it a state. <laughs> No, I'm only saying the great shards in there, right? But you, you yeah. there, there are. Well, it, I'm only saying for good reason because there's not a lot it of shards. Not all. No, and it does not. It's a little bit hot. It does not grow as well as it, it's not as. There is some very good. There is some good shards. <laughs> good recovery. <laughs> no, there is. This is absolutely delicious. And I'm, you know, for me, I experimenting with Chardonnay because I discovered I at first thought I'm not going to make Chardonnay I'm going to do all stainless steel I'm going to do a crisp clean kind of like a saw blanc and tasted it and went now I know why they oak age Chardonnay it really was just kind of so I have a just way too austere so this for being, I try and do, put some oak on it. We do oak aging. We do half stainless steel fermentation, half barrel fermentation, but it's all aged in oak. And, um, and you make Sauvignon Blanc. At, mm-hmm. So I, I my, my personal Selby thing is that uh, Sauvignon Blanc is made in the vineyard because really, and, and Pinot, I mean, you can't really do anything with it. You can't blend, you can't do anything with those varietals to make them better. Like yes, really, and there is no blending because no, there's no unless blending. you wanted you, to you blend a little it. Chardonnay or something, which to no, me defeats no, the purpose of No, those two varietals, it's all about the vineyard, in my opinion, and it's nice to agree. But I think Chardonnay is definitely made in the barrel. I think it needs barrels. And then I say things like uh, Merlot and Cabernet are, are made in the cellar because you're blending them. And then let's face it, Zen, what a hassle. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is such a hassle to make. And I do so many Zins. So. I know. And like, we went, they're hard to make. They take so much work. And, and Zen is what keeps us up at night during the harvest. Yep. Uh, you know, cabs and pinots just boom. They march along. They just exactly. make themselves. They're, they're, they're well behaved children. <laughs> yes. Zen is definitely. The unruly. It, it's harder than people real. I mean, it is. It's pretty challenging. You baby them along. I spend, I worry about those wines all through harvest oh. from start to finish of, of, and you think everything's going well and then boom. Oh, I know. So the, we're, we're like sort of badass because we make Zen, right? <laughs> it's, it's, don't yes. you agree, Sean? Yeah, absolutely. Make, we make big and jammy yes, styles. All of them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. You're going to chill this down, and we put a little chill on this. Oh, it is Zen. Oh, nice. So this is a, um, wow, we have, it's a different label. We started having, because I think there's about 48, we bottled 48 different varietals, bottlings uh, for oh, Wilson. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, 40, just under the Wilson brand? Mm-hmm. 48 different Zens? <sighs> So, wow. so we started coming up with some different labels, like Rock Pile has its own label, it's a silk screen bottle. So this label here is for all of our, from 
all, our grower series. So it's from all, we label everything that we buy grapes from, um, it goes and, in these and bottles. And how many, uh, how many Vineyards do you have in the growers series? How many bottlings? Um, we have. There's about ten. Oh, Some are reserves. See another ten. Helps title. Nice. Wow. So you, that's that's amazing to keep track of. Well, I'm excited about trying it. How about you? Well, I'm a, I'm a witch. <laughs> I know. And Brian and knows it's, that. It's warm. It's actually. For being, it turned out to be a very pleasant day. It's, it's like perfect Again. out here in your courtyard. Well, and I want to point out to those of you in hot states, um, in wine country, we are we are always chill our reds if it's hot outside. So there's nothing they warm wrong with up that. quick enough on their own. Oh. So. <laughs> so, so this is the Buzz, which um, our growers Buzz Seaton. I know Buzz. We know Buzz, of course. Old time Healsburg, and um, he's got a mix of old vines and up on the hillside some newer, but not really that new, probably 20 years old. Um, Wouldn't you say the hardest? Um, I, I, because I, I think you do this too, but the hardest thing that uh, we do as hands on winemakers, it's not what happens in the cellar because the cellar work is, you know, our cellar guys are on automatic pilot, you know, my, my right hand guy's been with me for 18 years now, but um, vineyard sampling, it is a lot, it's a lot of work. That is probably what I spend, that I spend all most, my time. so much time That's walking I, vineyards oh, and I, I spend 70% of my time during harvest in vineyards just sampling. Exactly, me too, making that decision. It's a, it's a hard decision. Some years it is such a hard decision to make. Is are you on, with Zin? Are you balancing out the the ripeness on it? Because you on a Zin, you can get very you know, even. an unripe berry to a raisin to the perfect, and it's it's always how do you balance that? Sometimes when I have to make it, you know, pull the trigger, like I really need to make a decision. I'll, when I'm going through, um, I do cluster samples, so I and you can either do berry cluster, berry samples or cluster samples, but sometimes I actually sort of blur my eyes so that I'm not getting into my head that it doesn't look quite right. And I can base it more on, you know, the, whether the seeds are, are crisp and whether it has the flavors and, you know, it's, it's tough sometimes, especially yeah. when it looks like it's about to rain. <laughs> uh, yes. Is it kind of a new thing though that for the winemakers to be in the vineyards, like, 20 years ago, you know, you had the growers and all. Was I've, that always I've been? always been in the years. I, yeah, I, know, I, I know a lot of winemakers who, I, I'm surprised at, there aren't a lot of us who actually do your sample that actively. So well, I, I, think, I think we're the exception. If you've ever had where a vineyard owner goes, this really needs to be picked. Can we pick it? Oh, please. <laughs> Well, I learned my lesson early on. I, I did these too. grapes and I'm going. I'm not going to name names, but you know, they're saying, oh, it's at, the D. You know, oh, they're 25 to 30. They'll be 28 in your. I know. And I get them and 23 grapes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And growers, it's always the battle. Growers want their grapes picked, and wine raisers well, always and, a little. And when well, there's full a, of juice. Yeah, there's a natural. Um, when you're buying grapes, there's a um, there's an inherent inherent conflict of interest because growers want it off the vine, and they want higher yields because that's how they make they the money on the vineyard. And <clears throat> of course, winemakers want higher quality, which doesn't. Now that I'm in doing this longer, it doesn't always um, translate into higher quality, you know, lower yields. But you know, no. I, I, I'm a little more relaxed than I used to be about that. I is is so much of you know I know because you know in like France they dictate how many you know what your That's right. and what you the yields should be for mm -hmm. the appellation and for me I look at the vineyard and some vineyards can handle it and if you have too small of a crop they ripen early and you don't get the flavor mm -hmm. so there's it really is looking at the whole vine and the grapes so. I don't necessarily go after it. Tonnage to me isn't the 
Well, and over the years, I've, I, I feel the same way. And over the years, I've learned some amazing things. Like, for instance, I I was very upset when my uh, my dry farmed old vine vineyard started irrigating. It's like, oh my gosh, this is tragic. This struggle. Well, it was the plants came back, and you know there were instances where it it was helpful because I could at least slow down the ripening. And it didn't go from some of those old vine dry farm, you get three days of 98 degrees and right, they go it from die. beautiful, plump, nice. Cook some in three days. And it's they search. just shrivel. <laughs> and you go, I'm just about bringing late harvest in. I know. And, and I mean, Diane, I'm sure you'd agree. Like just when you, I, I, I now know better than to say, I am positive that if you, you know, now I'm a little more like, yeah, we can give it a try because it's, you know, vineyards are living, changing things, and oh, they certainly are. And no year is the same. It's true. But we all know it's really about the winemaking and not the growers, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, she's both, so she got, really got to balance the answer here. <laughs> that would be hard. Like, I, I'm, I'm neurotic anyway. I seriously, I lose sleep worrying about, uh, you know, what's happening in the barrels, and I, it's best that I. I, I even try to limit some of my what if knowledge because it'll I'll worry too much. I can't imagine having both the you know wine and vineyards. I mean that must be really hard. Uh, you know the vineyards. Um, we have you know, we've had the same vineyard manager that we started with when we planted our first grapes in eighty six. So you have the trust there, which yes. And, I, and there's the team of winemakers that spend a lot of time, everybody walks the vineyards a lot. So I have help with that. It's not, you know, it's just not my responsibility for all those vineyards. Uh, we, we all divide and conquer a lot and in harvest too, especially if Antoine, Chris and I are all taking grapes um, on some vineyards. You know, we rely on each other to say, because like you say, there is so much time spent driving and walking vineyards that that we will often go, okay, somebody take, you know, drive out to Rock Pile, which is becomes a whole morning. Oh yeah. By the time it you does. drive out and hit vineyards and um, so does. there's luckily there's a lot of trust between vineyard manager and the other winemakers. So do you run during harvest as well? Yeah, it drops a bit during harvest. I'm probably three days a week. Now, do you do you get inspiration while you're running? Do you, yes, is that it's when, my. Is that when you process? It's information my mental. I've decisions. never ever ran with with earphones in. It's funny. I was going to ask to. you that. I was curious because you know, as much as you run, so is that your time? Do you do you, for instance, um, think about how you're going to handle a stuck fermentation or what yes, you're going to do? Yes, I make lists decisions and I go ahead? through. Wow. I, and, and when I run and going through and thinking through, I sometimes have some of my great inspirations yeah. when I'm running, because I do a lot of running by myself. I run with friends, but I would say half the days I run by myself. So it's a good, it's a good, just also mentally rejuvenating yeah. me. Yeah. And then I do a lot of my planning and thinking yeah. when I run. That's I awesome. I love that. I felt a little, um, uh, cheated because during my whole training for the New York Marathon, I never once got runner's high. I was like, I was never, I was never a gazelle leaping through Africa or anything. You know? <laughs> so, oh, so, so I There's love that sculpture. That is one of my favorites. So that's a Brian Tedrick that was back there. Now this is Mazzocco and uh, Mazzocco was the second winery we bought after and here is Delormier, which um, is our f fourth winery we bought. Um, and there's Matrix. That was our third winery. Oh, Matrix. Out of, you're very <laughs> That's familiar right. they go with. On, keep talking. There's and there's Soda Rock. Soda Rock, which we saw in flames, is what it actually oh. looked like before that all happened. Um, oh, there's Pezzy King. That's taken from up at our house, actually. We live and look, that's our view looking down. And there is St. Anne's, 
which um, used to be the old Blackstone. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's Jackson Keys, which is our not one non Sonoma County winery. It's up in Mendocino, up near Hopland. Wow. And is it that? Oh, that's Rock Pile. Nice. That's the barn. Oh, it's all solar. Oh, right. you know that? Oh, and then we have, isn't this the Anderson Oh, we do. We do have another Anderson. Yeah, no, we have Anderson Valley. Two <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so um, we, we, this, this okay, wasn't. Yeah, I am getting old, even this though. Wasn't, this wasn't, I recognize it as your Anderson Valley. <laughs> so this was actually a test to see if she's really hands on, and she is. Good job. You passed the test. Yeah, I, <laughs> I did recognize them all. <laughs> yeah. It's like the flashcards. Good job. Good job. I, um, so my, my first job was at uh, Matrix. My, my name and phone number is still written in the back warehouse there. It is. Which one? At Matrix. In no, 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 not at Matrix. Yeah, Matrix. Yeah, Matrix. Yes, it's in the warehouse. The warehouse that's up the hill? No, down below. It says oh, it has my it has my pager number. I think it says beeper, so the guys would understand. <laughs> well, you know, yes, you it's still there. might be dating yourself a little longer than fourteen years now if you're talking about pagers. <laughs> I, know. I know it tells you something, right? I wouldn't even think somebody <laughs> under the age of thirty knows what a pager is. <laughs> yeah, I've heard about that. That's those. right. I've yeah. heard about those. So, do you, um, during harvest, do you, are you going around to all the properties all the time? Yes, um, make the wine at three. So, I bop around to the three different wineries from Matrix, Delornier, and Wilson is where I spend. In fact, especially when I had Molly, and now Molly I have dog, a border called my, dog. Old, my old dog we had to put down this spring. But I'm sorry. So, they'll see the dogs, they'll be at Wilson, and oh, then I go to Delarmy and they go, hmm, that dog is following me. <laughs> In fact, look at this cat. Oh, my cat, <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's radar. Look at you, beautiful thing. Well, animals, to me, animals in wine are quality of life issues, right? Yes. I mean, they're just, they help your quality of life. Um, I am saying this with, I, and I can't even believe I'm about to say this. This is one of the best scents I've ever had. Well, I swear. You. It is crazy good. This was one of my favorites. I mean, of, it, it, the best the in, my, in my in my life. And which one is this one? Buzz. That's it's Buzz. Okay. So Buzz Reserve. Okay. Actually, on West Dry Creek. Have, have you tasted North. it, Jacques? Sorry. Have you tasted it? Yes, and uh, I'm not saying a word so that it can be more for us afterward. <laughs> oh, act casual. And, and Buzz wow. Seaton, I guess he's finishing his winery because he has a winery also being built that he's wow. building. More or less himself. I mean, what so a does, wonderful Does that mean that his grapes won't be accessible anymore? He's going to make his own wine? No, because he still makes his own wine that he sells. Antoine, yeah. he custom crushes at Mazzocco. So it's a funny thing because occasionally there's a, you're really excited about a grower or some grapes and something happens, like they decide they want to make it themselves. I hate it when that happens. We're selling, <laughs> we've got a couple vineyards that are selling right now. So. I am hoping that with, you know, when and if it sells, that we can keep that relationship. But I know I, it can be a scary thing, as you know, where you have to buy everything that exactly, you know, and your customers count on that. Being I know. A, a, you know, it's your it's your staple that you have there. Well, definitely, and, and during, well, uh, there are market upheavals. Of course, it's it's not even secular. It's it's like with this pandemic, we can't predict something like this happening. But you know, there was two thousand and eight, there's nine eleven. So there are a lot of um, crazy market things that we've gone through. But you know, right before that, there are these huge uh, the economy strong and there's high demand, and it's tough to keep vineyards under those circumstances. And, and it's vi hard. Vineyards are getting more and more challenging to make a profit on vineyards, yeah, just as labor expensive. is getting, you know, and this current, you know, and right now with the pandemic, you know, nobody's crossing the border. It's um, it's getting more and more expensive to farm vineyards. You're talking Harder. about, so you're talking about the labor shortage right mm -hmm. now when you're talking about the border? Yeah, and it's been, I would say about the past two years, it's getting harder and harder to get 
people who are willing to work. Vineyard work is well, hard work. Yeah, it is hard work. But even in, uh, in the past, I've always had uh, excess guys to do like night shift and things like that. And, uh, you know, key workers are now starting to be, you know, key people in vineyards and, and all sorts of industries are paying so well, they're really taking away from even management positions and sellers. Yeah, it's it's labor is just getting. Yes, and us cannabis because this is Northern California, cannabis and and the uh, grapes has it affected the uh, labor? I think in uh, where we've seen it has been in the harvest. Yeah, during harvest. During harvest. Because you can be trimming ago. up in Mendocino and making more money in cash and cash yeah. and not working as hard. I don't know what legalizing and, and, and you get to enjoy the, you know, we don't allow drinking on the job, but they do. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that extra, yeah. makes the I'm job a little more fun, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, so it's, you know, I, it's, I think that was worse about two years ago. You know, like several years ago, it was a real problem because they just take off and to, to trim. Yeah, pickers were, getting people to pick grapes were, and you know when you've made yeah. the decision to pick your vineyard and it's 95 degrees, you're not willing to let it sit for another week. Yes. You know, you want it picked tomorrow when you kind of make that decision. Are you doing mechanical harvesting to compensate for the we labor have, shortage? We have brought in, we're just in the process of trying to, to, work out the logistics of buying our own mechanical harvester. We have hired, like rented, um, or contracted a mechanical harvester to come in and, and pick some of our grapes. Uh, right now we don't own one, but that is what we, I think that's the future of, oh, yeah. like Europe, I think they do. So, I mean, there's still some that they do, but so much of it is mechanical. Well, it's so much better to own equipment. I hate subcontracting anything. I mean, it's ridiculous, but, but it's unreliable. And we had a vineyard just completely beat up and we had to stop. It was just... Oh, from the mechanical harvester? And so um, what happens, just so, so people understand, and I'm with Diane from Wilson Winery, or Wilson Artisan Estates, who's also a winemaker. And um, so mechanical harvesting, it's hard on the plants and it can be a little bit hard on the fruit, but I've had some pretty good outcomes with mechanical harvesting as far as, as far as the quality of the fruit not being compromised. And the stuff. past... And I, I was surprised by that. The past few years, they have, you know, it used to be, I think they just shook the hell out of those grapes <laughs> and, you know, you got everything that came out with them. And now, like <laughs> Polonc, a yeah, French company, a French company, and now you can buy an optical sorter. So. There's a lot of like high end Napa cabs who specify that they want they like, want it machine harvested and it then you don't even have to de stem it, it just comes in like a big bowl of blueberries. Well, explain explain what an optical sorter is. One of I mean it because you can do it. So and I think they use air and so sure. they've got optics that can read I think it, like the quality of each. So you can put right. it so that you want it to shoot out raisins, stems, leaves, and it's got a blower. I don't know what the, the, the whole the, Yeah, it's usually, I mean, the one that we're testing at, uh, in Napa uh, had six cameras, high-speed cameras, and, they, and arms that, were, that have vacuums, and they can actually pick a a, 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 you know, one grip. Are, are you saying, so you're so, saying so, so there are a lot of different types. Wow. This is the latest. It was, they called it the alien. The alien? The alien. <laughs> because it does get these arms moving oh, very but fast. I was just seen an older one that had right. the, you yes. know, they had the, the cameras or whatever, the lasers, however they did. And, and then, uh, something drops and stuff. Yes. Yeah, and it would be able to blow it over here. Yes, and it would exactly. Drop and yeah, so there's a lot of different this new one? Um, it's a company, and I forgot the name, of course, which I should. Anyway, they have two machines now. One of them, I think. Yeah, we're right. But, but there's still, um, it, it's not, it's important to remember that it's not a situation where somebody gets on a piece of equipment and they're driving through a vineyard and they finish work and all the grapes are picked. I mean, there's still labor in addition to that involved and there's, 
And, and as a grid grower, you got to look at your trellis system, right? Yeah, so we are trying to put in any new, and you can't have, it has to be under a 15% grade. There's a certain uh, grade, yeah. you know, you can't have too steep on the crossbars. You have to have the vineyard is set up for a mechanical. Well, it has to be organized. I mean, you have well, to yeah. know. And spend what, a lot of money. And spend, <laughs> oh, there's that. It's just the detail, right? <laughs> and a half a million dollars oh, out of mechanical yeah. harvester. So. You know, it's funny. I've done every job at the winery over the years. Um, I've only spent in my career about 30 minutes to an hour actually picking grapes because what people don't realize is how it's dangerous with those cutters and those guys out there picking it's hard work and it's it, there's a lot of talent in it i mean it's pretty amazing it's hard to work watch. it's it hard so work hard. i have so much appreciation for for all the vineyard workers have you picked grapes before I've probably done maybe a little more than you, but I'm probably more like four hours. Oh, good job. <laughs> but still, I, I wouldn't I call myself a picker. That. And, you know, these guys are whipping past me, and and it's heavy. You get that lug bin. Heavy. I don't know what they 40 pounds. Yeah, it's... Well, you'll see, um, there are a lot, a lot more women <laughs> doing picking We now. have... Of our vineyard crew, half are women. I know it's it's, and they're they, and they're they're very thorough, and do a good job. And they're all the tires and the, they do all the suckering and mm -hmm. and they're much more meticulous. Yeah, they're yeah. detail oriented. Yeah. yeah, in general. So what is? <laughs> That's just life in general. Yeah. So I. <laughs> Uh, Diane, what is your, uh, if you had to name one thing that you think is the most um, rewarding about making wine, what would you say? Um, well, where, what I get the most satisfaction from is during harvest, that coming in in the morning and sticking your nose in the tanks and running numbers and going, what did this do overnight? Because it's, it really is such a living process that, um, you know, hopefully you've had progress and it's not with like some of the Zins where you go, oh, it's yeah. the same bricks as it was <laughs> last night was... when I left. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, and right now I'm bottling, which is gonna be bottling for the rest of the summer. And it's yeah, that satisfaction of seeing, okay, I can stop worrying. I can't do anything more about it. This is it, and here it is. Well, and bottling is, I, I think most winemakers would say that uh, bottling's the most stressful, stressful. oddly, because you're, you get to the point of no return. Yes. I mean, there's some stress to making sure it's technical, technically fine. I don't stress about that because it's, you, know, you do the right things, but now, because I'm neurotic, I'm pretty relaxed until I have to open the first bottle after it's in the bottle, and then I start freaking out. So I'll hand it to my friends and say, "Oh, what do you think of this?" <laughs> I mean, so I, I, you know, I'm a little bit better, but still. Yeah, that is definitely the most stressful part, and it, you, it is so nice when you go, or you give it to somebody else, and they go, "Hmm, wow, this is delicious." That's always the. Mm -hmm. Well, Somebody like telling right, you like that right now. This is so that good. Is I, I I want people to know. That, so this is a grower series of Wilson, and you said you have about ten different vineyards that are part of your grower series. So we buy from Forkini. The Forkini's out on Dry Creek Road, and we've got Buzz, and I buy from Doug Raffinelli, who is a brother to a half brother to. Um, Dave. From Rat Dave, Dave yeah, from Raffinelli here. Winery. And um, and I buy from over on Limerick Lane, the um, Cypress Ridge, and McLean Primitivo, which is out on um, in Alexander Valley. And I have a really nice relationship with all the growers, and they're all in a Bob Littell from Traborse. Oh, yeah, I love Bob. Yeah. Just a, you know, everybody has a different growing style, and I really love all the 
talking with each one, and, and their vineyards show their personality type too. So, yeah, um, during harvest, so you're out in vineyards most of the time, and you're calling all of the picking decisions? Pretty much, you know, there's a little bit that, and both Antoine or I or Chris will go, oh, I don't know, I'd like to have a second opinion as we're both taking the grapes, but I spend most mornings, well, at least three or four mornings, hiking vineyards, and then I come in and do all my work orders on ads, and I do a lot of those too, just to save time. I'm pretty hands-on winemaker. Do you get sad when the, the last of the grapes come in? I mean, I, I'm always happy, but I love harvest. It's the fun part of the job. Yeah, because it's so, nothing is the same, and you're working, I'm a, I like being physical and moving, and, I know. you know, right now there's so much time being spent on spreadsheets and topping mm -hmm. and spreadsheets. numbers. Really? <laughs> 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 I thought of that. <laughs> so, I, Maybe I should try that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Excel is my best friend for nice. winemaking stuff. Do yeah. you have a winemaking program? I do not. So, we, we are very primitive. Yeah, we're I'm just, good. I mean, we may as well have cave drawings in our lab or something. <laughs> it's pretty primitive. I mean, we keep records, but everything's very hand. -written. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. I just have developed spreadsheets that I make my life easier yeah. to keep track of inventory. Just as well. Inventory is the biggest. The government wants to know how much wine you have so they can get their taxes. Do you, do you see, um, if, do you think Ken's vision is more expansion in the future or is it, is he just going, or are you, are you all going to just see what, what happens and make decisions one day at a time? I think he's working. We have an old building out in Point Reyes Station that we'd like to, had originally had plans to put oh up a hotel in. Oh my fabulous. And then we have up in Geyserville, we have the old lamps and tractor building, which I think would make a great hotel and restaurant there, too. So those are my projects I'd like to do. It's true, because you're also in the um, out other, like, not lodging, what would it be called? It would be lodging. We have, we've got two little inns. We've got the, Cal we've got the Calderwood and the, the Grape Leaf. Oh, and then right. we have some different houses at the vineyards that we... Are those just for wine club members, or are they open? Can no, they're open for them. You know, wine club members get a better discount, but they're open to the public. And are your properties open to the public right now? They are. Everything is open. We're doing just outside tasting. Uh, we don't have anything inside right now. Uh, it's not mandated, but we just find that it's easier keeping everybody. It's just you know, trying to keep everything cleaned and wiped down and people spaced. It's just easier to have everybody outside. So, yeah. and I think that as of Friday, it's going to be only outdoor eating and tasting rooms. I think our numbers have gone up. Yeah, but um, I think as a community, we're, I, we're very conscientious in Northern California and in Sonoma County in particular. and. Um, I, I think the spirit of what's going on has been, if we need to close, then we're going to close and make the most of it. And I would say Sonoma County has been done their job yes. really well. I think so. And, um, you know, I heard somebody, you know, they, they were putting up signs, you know, masks are taking away our freedom. And <laughs> it was, and it went, you know, masks are the thing that seems to be the most effective when you're out in in groups and you know one of the health officer made a point saying well you can't go in and smoke in a bar or restaurant you just can't do anything you want so how hard is it to put a mask on you know it's so well so we we're encouraging everybody to behave <laughs> I was wondering right. what that was <laughs> no i'm just saying it's um do you see what, what do you see happening with the pandemic right now? Uh, I, you know, it's such unknown territory. It just is, I think anybody's guess, but this, I think this virus is here to stay. I don't think it's going away anytime soon, and I don't think we're getting herd immunity anytime soon. When you look at the percentage, it, it's going to take us like three or four years to get herd immunity, which 
Well, actually, let's say it's going to take us about uh, 20 or 30 cases. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at it that so, way. So, you know, about I think... One a day, yeah. Okay, one year. <laughs> so by the time we get the vaccine, we should have at least... We should be 40 cases advanced or something. And I think overall, at least... I can't speak for the rest of the country, but I feel like Sonoma County has embraced it. They've been planting gardens. They've been making bread and cooking and sort of getting back to some simpler things in life when you're not as busy running out to dinner and you know having to cook and probably much less wasteful too because you're cooking more so you're oh using up stuff instead of you know oh oh we're going out to eat oh we're not here tonight and then you look at something and go Ugh. so i i can um, personally say that uh, the the two things that i've gained from this pandemic my gosh cooking it's just crazy and again i am home sheltering with a cat and it's amazing what i eat every night by myself and drink for that matter you know do food my hearings it's pretty you know saying go with the flow and the other thing has been um I'm, I'm doing a lot more writing and a lot more reading and so are there things that have changed in your life or uh, way more reading i would um an actual books instead of I will sometimes do audible or podcasts when I'm in the car and I have been sitting down at night and because there's only so much Netflix you can watch I, watch I start kind of going okay I'm sick of the TV and so I have read more books and more interesting books and people have passed around a lot of different interesting books so I have and um, you know, miss the travel. That's probably I miss the travel too. Yeah, usually are in Canada, right, for a month. Yeah, I would be there by beautiful now. place in uh, the Georgian Bay. Bay. Have you been there, Jacques? Yes, I've been here there oh, a couple of times. Oh my god! Didn't want to come back, but when I heard it's frozen during the winter, I was glad to come back. Did what you know a beautiful and No, he came in the summer. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, you would, you would go. Oh, yes. nice. So, so, so that's where you would be right now? Ken would have been there for most of June and through the rest of the summer. He's leaving oh. next week. He keeps changing flights, changing flights. And I normally leave, but I'm so behind on bottling from suppliers to everything just being delayed. Capsules oh, coming right. from... Europe. Yeah, is that what's, you know, I was checking a couple of people today about the, the delays in shipment of equipment and yeast and, you know, all these products. And is that, are you feeling that also? Or? I was, my corks have been, my, my glass was delayed, even though we did, I thought, oh, this was great. We made our decision that we're switching to local glass because we were buying from, you know, from different suppliers. And so now we're with a local glass company that comes out of Modesto. Oh, I know the name. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, think I was caught there being chased by the guard because I never saw the entrance. So I drove in and guards was chasing me. And, uh, yeah. But they have been delayed, <laughs> you know, like with everybody, I think everybody's yeah. been having staggered shifts and small shifts, trying to keep less people in contact. So from capsules to glass, Corks have been the only thing that I haven't had mm -hmm. Well, and, and think about how much our industry has changed with um, world events. Like uh, after 9-11, we started having to track all of our yeast lots. And, you know, every every time there's an event of some kind, oh, it, was that, it, it um, changes. We, we get more regulated for national security reasons. Yeah, you have to track, you have to keep the lot number of everything that goes into wine. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. That's where those spreadsheets are probably coming handy. Yeah, yeah that's where I use those. <laughs> Maybe I should look at that. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just got something and from I University just... of France. They check. They can now tell through isotopes where the grapes in that bottle came from. Wow. Came from, I mean, the actual site, GPS. Things yeah. are happening in this world. We know there are things happening that um, I think I think I can speak for both of us. 
I think we both kept the process really simple of winemaking, and um, you know, without using current technology, you can still make great wine. Yeah, I'd say I, you know, I have some newer equipment that makes my life easier, but I'm still doing like it. a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I am still making wine. It's still the same process and same fermentation. I use all native use, so. Um, well, it's art, science, and nature. Mm -hmm. And best. being like cooking, saying you're cooking. Cooking is. <laughs> Cooking exactly. and winemaking have a lot in common. So we're, um, I know they, well, thank you for being here, of well, course. thank you for having me. I mean, and we've, the, we've got some more adventures ahead, for sure. Boat trips. Road oh, yeah. Road trips. Oh, yeah. Road we, trips. Will, <laughs> we will venture out. But um, it's, been, it's been really fun talking to you. Do you have anything, um, any closing thing you want to say about, um, about, where you see the future of what you and Ken are doing right now? Oh, that's a better, that's a Ken question. Well, and it could be, how about um, the next time you go running? Do you have any races besides your 462 I did, miles? I did a race down in, there was one, it was a, and it was, you could start on your own time and finish and you just sent in your Garmin. There was water left. It was down in Flagstaff, and that's been about one of the only races that has gone on. Otherwise, I'm doing this virtual 461-mile race well, what, over my over my eight weeks. Well, what what you're doing is impressive. So uh, keep on running, and my gosh, making this fabulous wine. We thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, thank you for having me. This is very absolutely back with old friends. So yes. we'll say to everyone. Um, Stay safe, stay healthy, stay home, and enjoy some. Wear your mask. Wear your mask and mm -hmm. enjoy wine. So we will see you next Wednesday in Susie's Courtyard. <laughs>